Hey everybody, welcome back to Theology Thursday uh, 2.0. I, uh, I really tried to seek the Lord's will and what it is that today's episode is going to be on given our cultural climate right now and uh, what I think he's laid on my heart is what it means to serve. And the reason I think he has laid this on my heart is I have genuinely struggled with, as a white Christian man, how do I help? How do I help those who are hurting in an environment that I'm not really fluent in? Um, in a lifestyle and in a community that I don't truly connect to. Uh, and what God has laid on my heart is how can all of us, coming from various different backgrounds, serve one another and serve in a, a healthy way, in a productive way? Because the truth is, when we look at what it means to be a Christ follower, that goes hand in hand with service. I mean, being Christian is, is not about what you get out of it. You know, like going to church is not what you get out of Sunday morning worship. But more importantly, how can you serve in Sunday morning worship? How can you serve the person sitting next to you? How can you serve the person sitting behind you or in front of you? What ways can you get plugged into your church or your community and help those who are struggling? Because not everybody has the ability to physically serve. And so for those of us who do have the ability to physically serve and those who don't, there's all these different ways that God is calling each of you by the skills and the abilities that he's provided you to serve your community in all capacities. So I wanna to begin today's episode by, by looking at uh, 1 Peter. Uh, this is uh, the first of two letters that Simon Peter wrote. Uh, and there's actually a specific section in his first letter that he kind of talks about serving or more importantly talks about Christ-like serving. So this morning I'm going to read to you from 1 Peter. I'm in chapter 4. I want to read to you verse 11 through I think it's just verse 11. It's just a really long verse actually. So open up your Bibles to 1 Peter chapter 4 verse 11. Listen to God's word. If anyone speaks, he should do it as one speaking with the very words of God. If anyone serves, he should do it with the strength God provides, so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. So what is Peter saying? What does it mean to serve? Right now, we are seeing a lot of videos of different people standing up and voicing their concern about where we're at as a country, as a community, as a culture. Some are speaking truth. They are speaking as if God is speaking through them. They speak a, a concept of love, peace, and grace. Unfortunately, there are also others who are speaking hatred, violence, and aggression. And I think what we can take away from what Paul is saying is that in all aspects of our lives, whether it's a one-on-one -on -one conversation, or whether it's you are preaching on Sunday morning, or you are standing on the street corner calling out for justice, in all words that we should say, we need to make sure they're being spoken as if it's God himself speaking. And we cannot confuse what God says in Scripture with what we want to say. God will always, from the book of Genesis to the book of Revelation, will always want to speak in love. God wants all of his children to be as one family, one community, under his son Jesus, so that we can live together in harmony. It doesn't matter where you come from or what your background is. This is God's will, and this is his design. 
And I, I spoke about this last night in, in youth group. And it was part of my prayer that when we see things from the perspective of God, God doesn't see country against country, continents versus continents, people versus people, or community versus community. He doesn't see skin color. He doesn't see ethnicity or, or race or gender. He doesn't see religious denominations or religious sects. Ultimately, God sees all of his people. He sees every single person that is born and created as his child. And there's a very interesting fact about the beginning of the Gospel of Matthew. You see the intro to Matthew's genealogy, and it talks about how Jesus is coming from Abraham, but at the same time, he comes from David. And the writer of Matthew does this intentionally. Abraham is not a part of Israel's tradition. He is not Hebraic by any stretch of the imagination. He's Gentilic. He is a Gentile. All right? And so the reason why Matthew includes Abraham and David is that he is tying both the Gentiles, the, the non-Jew, to the Jews through King David, the epitome of what it means to be Jewish. Because Jesus is the sovereign Lord over all people. And so for us as, as Christians and for us as a community and for us as, as a people, as God's children, that's what we need to be doing. We need to be speaking love to all people. Regardless of who you are, what profession you are, that's ultimately what it needs to be. And, and I by no means am going to speak to any uh, social injustice or cultural norms because, as I've said uh, in previous episodes, I am not educated in this stuff. I am not articulate enough. I'm not smart enough. And I'm not called to speak to that. What I am called to speak on is love. Fundamentally, love. And as young teenagers watching this, that's what you need to hear. You need to hear what, what God is saying. Speak in love. Because the words that God speaks, they're love. Transformation, change, reform. But then God speaks through Paul and he goes on to say that if, if you are going to serve, do it with the strength that God provides you. If you're going to serve somebody, go and serve them. You know, just uh, last month, we had a nasty tornado go through on Alaska. And many people had the physical capacity to go and serve, to cut down trees, to, to tarp up roofs, to move heavy objects. But then at the same time, there were people who didn't have that ability. You know what they got to do? They got to pray. They got to pick up the phone and call somebody and say, hey, I just want to check up on you. I know you're busy. I know things are chaotic. I just want to check up on you. How are you doing? How are you holding up? Please do not misunderstand that service means you have to physically go do something. Only physically go and do something if you are called and have the capabilities to go and do something. If you don't, you still can serve. Like right now, regardless of your perspective and regardless of what you believe is right and wrong, you can write a letter to your congressman. You can write a letter to your senator, to your mayor. You can, you can still do something without having to physically go and, and maybe stand on a street corner and, and protest. You can pray from the, the, the solitude of your bedroom, your car, the, the track, or the football field, or wherever you're at, the lake, the boat, doesn't matter. You still have the capacity to serve. Two of my closest friends are, are African-American, um, and, and many of you guys may not know this, but 
The man who introduced me to my wife, Natalie, uh, is African-American, BJ, and he's actually a youth pastor, a spectacular youth pastor. I mean, this, this guy is, is something else. Like, he is lit on fire for God. And he's the one who introduced me to Natalie. One of my groomsmen, one of my closest friends from, from when I was a teenager, junior high and high school, is one of the first kids that I met when I moved to Florida. He's African-American. Both of those individuals, I texted, because I knew I had that ability to serve them. And I said, hey, how are you doing? How are you holding up? How is it with your soul? And one of my, one of the, those two guys, one of my friends, he actually called me. He was like, you know what? Thank you. Thank you for texting me. Thank you for reaching out. Thank you for asking how I'm doing. Sure, I may not be connected directly to some of the tragedy that happens, but I'm still a part of that community. Thank you. I appreciate you for reaching out and being concerned about me. And he even went as, as far to say, out of all my white friends, you're the only one who's ever asked me how I'm doing. And you see, that's an act of service. I don't really know how I can help my country and help people right now, but that's what I can do. That's how I can serve. And that's what you can do. You can serve just by asking people, how are they doing? How are they being affected by this? How can you pray for them? Have a conversation with people. And, and, and don't have a conversation with an agenda. All right? uh, students, I need you to hear me on saying this. Listen to me. You need to actively listen. When you ask someone, how are they doing, don't ask them, how are you doing, so that you can then convince them they're wrong. Like, for example, I had a conversation with my mom last night, and she has some very strong feelings about what we're experiencing right now. And while I so badly wanted to, to get into the nitty-gritty with it, I understood that that was not my place, nor was that the conversation to have at that moment. I just needed to listen to see where she was at and what she was struggling with. Same thing applies to you. Listen. Just listen to people. Don't have an agenda. How are you doing? Wow. How does that make you feel? That's the conversations we need to be having. Don't say, how are you doing? Oh, well, hold on. Hold on. Let me tell you my opinion. You know, I think, I think, that this, that, and the other thing. No, don't do that, guys. That's not what Scripture is telling us. That's not what God is telling us. Speak love. Serve as you are able to serve. You know, I'm a United Methodist. I have been a United Methodist since I was an infant. Confirmed and baptized in the church, and I have served it since I, since I can remember. I even went to, to a Methodist seminary. I went to Asbury Theological Seminary. And John Wesley, who is the, the founder of the United Methodist Church, or really, he's the founder of the Methodist movement, which spawned the United Methodist Church, he had a motto. And again, I also read this uh, last night, in, or I, I spoke on this last night in, in youth group. But he lived by a motto, and I think it is so important to hear this right now. Because United Methodists, and fundamentally, Methodist as a whole, that's a, a, a large portion of our denomination is social injustice and, and fighting for social justice and social equality and social reform. And this is what John Wesley lived by. This is what he said. Do all the good you can, by all the means that you can, in all the ways you can, in all the places you can, at all the times you can. And this one's very important right now to all the people you can, as long as ever you can. Right now, in, in a time of social reform and social upheaval and social, social pain, what we can do as, as Christians, as believers in Jesus Christ, is to emulate what Jesus did. On the night that he was betrayed and he was being arrested, 
Peter stood up and he, he grabbed a knife and, and he slashed at the guards and, and cut off the guard's ear. Jesus looked at Peter and he yelled at him, put that away. Those who live by the sword die by the sword. Jesus had every right to sit here and say, you know what? You're a sinner. You wicked, evil world. I'm going to call upon my father's angels and I'm going to smite all of you because every single one of you have messed up. He could have easily said that. He was just in saying that. He was right in saying that. We are. We are a broken, sinful creation. Right now, you have sinful thoughts. You may disagree with what I'm saying. You may be boiling with rage. Or maybe you see something online. YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Snapchat, Instagram. It doesn't really matter. And you're boiling with rage. And you have all these hateful thoughts and angry thoughts in your mind. And, and you may even spout them to people. That's a sin. You're not showing love. You're sowing dissent. You're, you're aggressively going against what God wants. You're disobeying. God has every right to just, just like Thanos, snap you out of existence. But he doesn't. Jesus knelt down, he grabbed that guy's chopped off ear and he put it back on his head and he healed him. And then, just a few hours later, again, as sinful creation was nailing him to the cross, he looked to God and said, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. Again, Jesus had every right. God gave him full authority. He could have called down the angels of heaven and smited all of us, just eliminated us, just get rid of us. Totally just. He didn't. Through love, he laid down his life for us. He spoke love. He served out of love. And he did what he could. He prayed for us. He served us, he healed us, he saved us. When he spoke, he spoke with the words of God. He didn't speak about violence and hatred and malice. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. The first and greatest commandment is to love your God with all of your strength and your heart and your mind and your body and, and literally everything that you are. You know why he said that? Because that's the only way to, to heal. And that's what we need right now. We need to serve each other. We need to put each other first. We need to do it out of love, out of compassion. Both sides of the aisle are hurting. Everyone is hurting. Hurting from the loss of family members due to COVID-19 or, or the loss of jobs or, or isolation. We're hurting because of this reason or that reason. We have friends who are hurting, so we hurt because they're hurting. Everyone is hurting. We're all in the same boat. So I want to challenge you right now in all the ways that you can serve by all the means that you can at all the times that you can to all the people you can serve serve others as you serve yourself guys if you haven't done so yet there's a big red button down below it's a subscribe button can you hit that subscribe button for us help us grow our channel help us to to grow our message so that other teenagers may see this and be a part of this. So that God's kingdom continue to be built. And also, I highly recommend you hit that little bell icon. Right? Because what that does is it notifies you, and I'm sure you know this. It notifies you when we upload a video. When we go live for Wednesday Night Youth Worship. Because we're still going live, even though we're now meeting in person. And last night, we actually hit our normal numbers. We hit about 45 total people, which was awesome. Praise God. But we still live stream it. And we still have about five people who watch it online. But this allows you to know when we're online and when we're uploading a video. And if you love this content, smash that like button. 
The more likes we get, the more it gets pushed out. More people get to see this. More of your classmates get to see this. More, more teenagers in our country and in our community get to see this. Because they need to be a part of this. We need to unify the church and we need to be one body. But I want to know where you're at. I asked this last night in youth group, how are you doing? How are you holding up with everything going on? Put down in the comments, how are you doing? How are you dealing with what is happening in our world right now? And what is happening in our country? I, I'll reply to every single comment and I will pray for every single comment. And guys, I love you very much. If I haven't seen you yet, I really hope that I get to see you tomorrow. We're having late day or maybe, maybe next week for, for Wednesday night youth group. But guys, I will see you in the next episode. Bye.